Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Deneen and this is Design by Denain. Today I am going to be sharing with you some DIY zebra no-sew Christmas stockings. So this is the fabric that I'm using. It's called Velboa or Velbo. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. It's a synthetic fabric and it's printed on one side. It has virtually no stretch to it. It's nice and stiff and it's in a fabulous zebra pattern. To template your stocking, I suggest using an existing stocking that has a shape that you like. The easiest way to do this is probably just to grab one from the Dollar Tree. They have all sorts of shapes and sizes. Pick one that you like the shape of and use that as your template. So this one is a stocking that I actually started last year and haven't finished yet, but I like the shape of it. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to pay attention to where the pattern is sitting on this when I'm tracing it out. So I'm using my trusty silver Sharpie, which I love because it shows up on both black and white. Note that I have my fabric doubled up, so I'm cutting out two sides of the stocking at once. And then I'm just tracing around it using my Sharpie and then I will cut it out. I also cut out a piece of felt as a backing because I want my stockings to hang nice and straight and not flop over. To attach the stocking to the backing, I used spray adhesive and you're gonna wanna spray this onto a board or something cause it's pretty sticky. You don't really want it on your work surface. Before you glue, lay your two pieces out as they're gonna be cause you don't wanna be mucking around with the glue when it's all sticky. So lay them together and then peel back half apply the spray adhesive, then tap it down and then repeat with the upper section. A little side note here, I actually did some with black felt and some with white felt and I found that the white felt worked a lot better. It kept the white really white. The black felt tended to make the white look a little less bright. So I only did the backing on one side of the stocking and then the other side is just the fabric. So for this part, we're gonna Get everything all lined up and then trim anything that needs to be trimmed and basically you're getting this ready to glue all the edges so you want it lined up perfectly. And then we just take our hot glue gun and you're going to run a really nice thin bead right along the edge and press it together and try really hard not to burn yourself. Spoken from somebody who has a lot of hot glue burns. And glue all the way around the edges except for the top edge. And then to further finish off the edges, I used this seam binding. I purchased this at the fabric store. It's a double folded bias tape. Apply a line of hot glue on one edge of the seam binding. And then you're gonna basically roll the stocking down onto it. And you're gonna pay close attention to that crease. You don't wanna go over the crease because then you're gonna have a lumpy looking edge. And then once that's done on the other edge of the tape, you're gonna apply glue. You can either apply it to the stocking or to the seam binding, it works well either way. And then just press it down. And this is where I always burn myself, so probably a better idea to use something besides your hands to press it down with. So when you get to the toe edge or any curved part of the stocking, the best way to do it is just sort of give it a bit of a pull because the, the seam binding is cut on a bias, so it has a bit of stretch to it. So as you can see, I'm just sort of, I'm pulling the binding and then pushing the sock in. And again, you're gonna keep notice of that edge. And when, you're, when you do the top portion, you're gonna probably have a couple little tiny folds in there, but that's okay, you're not even gonna notice those. Once all of the edging is done, then we're gonna attach a piece of ribbon for the stocking hanger. And I just used grow grain ribbon. This is actually Dollar Tree ribbon. So we just need to cut a piece that's long enough for a decent sized stocking hanger. I think this one ended up being seven inches and then three and a half when folded. So we're just gonna glue it inside the stocking and hot glue again. Now it's time to move on to the fur trim. So a couple things about cutting fur. Um, you can buy pre-cut fur on a trim roll and it's quite pricey and you can also buy fur by the meter and then cut it down to size and it's much more affordable because a half a meter of fur is going to get you probably six rows of trim. So because this was cut unevenly you can see there's sort of little bits that are not that are missing fur up in the top section there. I'm going to recut this edge so a nice straight line using my sharpie and my straight edge. You want to push the tip of the scissors 
underneath the fur and up against just the backing. So you're cutting the backing only and not the fur. So when you pull the cut piece away, your fur remains intact and it's not cut or torn. I couldn't decide whether to do black or white fur trim, so I decided to do both. So I'm doing a layer of black with a layer of white on top. So I have cut a piece of black fur trim off of a larger piece of fabric, and this fur has a very short nap to it. Both pieces of fur trim, the black and the white, are both four inches wide, and I've marked on my stocking down an inch and a half because that's how much I want the white fur to overlap the black. And you're going to want to have your seam in the center back. You don't want to do it along the side because you'll see it. And in case I haven't mentioned this before, a lint brush is going to be your best friend in this project. There's going to be a lot of lint. So I've put a line of glue along the line that I marked at the one and a half inch mark and I'm gluing the center portion of the black fur and once that's dry I'm going to go underneath and I'm just going to add a little bit of extra glue, not a ton, onto the back side of that fur just to keep that tack down. Then we're going to flip it over and do the same on the back side. Mark and cut off any excess so you don't have bulk in the back and then just glue down the edges with hot glue. So we're going to repeat the process for the white fur and you're going to want to keep the white fur very very close to the top edge. Probably even best to overlap it just slightly so you don't see the black bits from the zebra pattern. And then we're going to do the back the same as we did with the other one. And just give it a good lint brush to get all the little excess bits off and we are good to go. And here they are all hung by the fireplace with care in hopes that under the tree Christmas morning won't be bare. Not sure where all the presents are. Looking pretty bare under there. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I did zebra stockings, here's my zebra Bombay that sits in my dining room, which is along the same wall. <laughs> 